Hey, it's Dougie from Valto. I am a Microsoft MVP and I've been working with SharePoint for almost 15 years. In that time, I've seen so many different examples of SharePoint intranets, but I want to share with you my top 10 favorite examples of real world SharePoint intranets. So here's our first design and we refer to it as our Holler intranet. Now, the reasons why I kind of like this uh, particular layout is I quite like this area across the top, which has got this banner kind of image we can easily change. And we've got a logo that's centralized in the middle. Again, all of this can easily be changed at any time. We also have the hub navigation bar, which makes it nice and easy to navigate to things. You've probably heard before that people don't want to click more than three times to find content. We've also got some other navigational areas here. So we've got this hero tiles web part, which makes it nice and easy to navigate to core things that we know people want to access, like policies and procedures, knowledge base, uh, information about our vision and values, things like that. And of course, we can change the background image, the text, and the links of where they're linking to. We also have a quick links web part on the right hand side. And again, we can change the icons, the text um, of where we're kind of linking off to. We then have our important information updates web part, which we can see here. We've got a bit of information about road closures and we can click through to see more details. We've also embedded Viva Engage. So we've got some conversations and that provides us almost like a bit of a social element uh, pulling through directly onto our intranet homepage. We've also got on the right hand side here some world clocks. So wherever kind of our offices are located. Also, we can see local weather, which can be a fantastic way of kind of having something to talk about. It's a very British thing to talk about the weather, but it's a great way of starting conversations with colleagues. Just to say, oh, I've seen that it's, it's sunny today in New York when you're on those meetings with colleagues over the pond. We can also see some news here. So we've got some roll ups uh, of news from different areas of our intranet. We can also embed things like YouTube videos or stream videos if we wanted to, or maybe some call to action buttons, which are going to navigate us off to other areas of the internet. We've also uh, embedded in here some more of the Viva kind of dashboards, um, which makes it easy to access content, which is specific to the current user viewing it. And we've also got some upcoming events. So this is using the native out of the box events web part where we might want to be promoting upcoming events. Uh, training and general social get togethers. The second version of a holler intranet is a little bit more kind of simplistic. Uh, we've got a lot less going on here, but it's a lot more about kind of navigation again. So we've got these large hero tiles. So rather than just taking up a small area and then having more navigational links, we've just got these large tiles which are navigating off to some of the key areas that we know that people are looking for in an intranet. So things like expense systems, policies, procedures. Uh, leave requests, uh, things like that. Further down, we've got a much more simplified news. So again, if you're not planning on creating loads of news articles, you don't want them to go stagnant, um, then you can make sure that you've got a smaller news area. So say, for example, you're only publishing one news article a week. That's only three weeks worth, three weeks worth of content. Whereas on the last uh, example we were looking at, there was like 12 different articles, which would mean that content would be lingering around for best parts of three months, which is far too long. We've got more call to action, so maybe clicking through to an employee survey. The other cool thing I like about this design is it's very colourful. Uh, we're merging quite a lot of different brand colours into this, but they're all kind of nice pastel colours. We've got the local weather again. And we've got events, but again, much more streamlined, a lot more simplistic. We've got countdown timers to things like products or events. Um, we should have the latest tweet here, but for some reason it's not loading up. Curse of the live demonstration. But we also have our latest policy documents, which we can easily kind of flick through as well as company links uh, and things which are upcoming as well. The next example we refer to as the bank. And essentially, this is a bit of a combination of the ones we've seen so far. And you'll be starting to get the gist of actually using native SharePoint. A lot of these will look very simple um, or similar, I should say. But actually, we're just using the same web parts in different variations with different colors, different images and moving them around. And it does give it a totally different look and feel. So again, we've got this kind of uh, hero links, which are navigating us to some of the core areas. You can see we're using using um, a very sort of similar color theme we're using this kind of strong blue uh, which a lot of uh, financial and banks and people like that use to kind of give it a, a sense of authority and trust um, uh, essentially what we've got is on the right hand side a secondary content area which is where we have things like the the local either time or weather things like that again this is uh, maybe for people based in texas so we're not necessarily having all of the different uh, weathers here it's just maybe just one for a certain um, location. 
We then got news, and so news is being rolled up in a couple of places. It could be that it's my news, which is tailored to me. So with news, uh, news areas of SharePoint, we can tailor them so that it's showing you news based on your location or your job role um, or your department, for example. Then we've got more news areas here. So this is maybe a roll up, which is relevant to everybody. It's pulling through news articles from all areas. We've got my recent documents. So these are documents I've recently been accessing inside of my Microsoft 365, whether it be OneDrive or SharePoint. More call to actions if we wanted to go off to a learn more page. Uh, my recent sites are recent sites I've been accessing on my SharePoint. These areas here are almost more like uh, call to actions, but they could either be videos or image web parts, better text, and again, buttons which are linking off into more information. Further down, uh, we've got uh, company events. Um, so this could be um, as I say training things like that we can add events easily and then maybe um, some other sort of larger call to action now this is actually the hero web part but actually it's just being shown as a single tile in this case the next example I'm going to talk about is not necessarily a true intranet homepage, but it is maybe a sub area of an intranet. So maybe like an IT help desk area of an intranet where people can go to almost self-serve and get information that they need. So things like, for, for example, raising a support ticket, viewing the status of a support ticket, um, getting more information, training modules, FAQs, things like that. It might be that the IT team is actually tracking all of the known issues currently um, via a SharePoint list, and a SharePoint list can be embedded directly into a SharePoint page to show information so that people can check the known issues list before they go and submit their own ticket. Um, again, more call to action web parts, but this time, rather than the buttons being in the middle, they're on the left-hand side. We've got the news uh, web part. Uh, actually, sorry, this is actually a quick links web part, but rather than showing them as, as links like this, they're being shown as large tiles. Um, also, we've got our events web part, and again, because all of these web parts are responsive, they're going to take up the full width of the area that they've been given. So in this case, we're taking up a much larger space, whereas in previous examples, we've seen them going down the right-hand side. We've also got meet your team, and essentially, these are a series of people web parts which pull through um, from the kind of the ent ID, um, the Active Directory, essentially, um, and we can see their name, job title. We can click on them and see their email address, phone numbers, or even start a Teams chat with them if we wanted to. The next one is the Lighthouse. This is very similar, I guess, uh, to the layout of the bank. We've got this kind of navigation um, hero tiles across the top. We've got the quick links on the right-hand side. But again, we've simplified the events. We've got smaller events. We've only got two news articles. So if you don't have a lot of news, again, it's nice, keeps it fresh. This time, though, we can see we've also got the countdown web part. But we've also got these quick charts. And I wanted to quickly show you these because this is a fantastic way that you can show information to people directly on the home page of your intranet. So all we need to do is click on the edit button across the top. And that will put our page into edit mode. We can then select the chart that we want to change. And then you can see because I've been manually entering this data in here, all I need to do is change one of the numbers and it'll automatically change the bar across the top uh, there to sort of show the new figures that we've entered. Click on republish and then everybody can see that. Now we've also created an extra page. So if I click on see dashboard, I can then drill down even further into uh, this information by showing that this is actually on a separate page called sales figures, which is for the month of March. And again, we've just gone in and manually entered this data, which makes it really simple, really quick for people to access. The next example we have, we refer to as the heart. And again, we're using similar types of layouts here where we've got this secondary uh, content area here, but we've got brand new things we've not seen yet. So like we've got this carousel slider. Now this is actually news articles. And by clicking on this news article, it'll either open up in SharePoint, if it was a SharePoint news article, or we could link to external news articles as well and pull them through from third party websites. I quite like this, um, quick links web part here so rather than just putting out links we've actually put this almost like an faq to say how do i take a leave of absence and then clicking through to that will then take you through to the leave request portal or how do i prepare for my new job and that could take us through to the kind of onboarding portals to see more information as i scroll down we've got this kind of concept of three columns as well with more um, information um, by clicking on the more info button but it's a nice kind of designs again we're keeping the theme of this kind of color uh, running throughout 
We can also embed in applications into SharePoint. So here's an example of we've embedded our Power App, which is an expense request system where we can submit information about our expenses and see how much we've had kind of approved or pending to be sent back to us. Again, that expense system is something that Val to offer as a pre-built solution, which can be imported directly into your SharePoint intranet. Further down, we've got more news. We just display at this time with a much larger icon of the latest news article on the left-hand side, and then the, the next three underneath it. Again, this is fantastic. If you're only going to be publishing, say, an article once a week, that means then you've got a month's worth of content on here. And we can always go and see more information by clicking on the see all, see all the previous news articles which have dropped off the page. We can see the events in here, and again, um, similar to like the FAQ style across the top, we've got topics by role, quick links web part, which are taking us to topics based on roles or other topics. We've also got most popular documents, so it's showing us the latest documents that have been uh, uploaded. Also, we can see most popular documents, which are the most popular access documents. We can see buttons here, which are maybe taking us through to um, some celebration areas of anniversaries, promotions, um, and general call to actions, maybe of like how we can help. We can also have these like nested FAQs across the bottom, and this is essentially just collapsible sections. And again, it means we don't have to take up the full kind of scroll of the page. We've just got some nice, easy FAQs that people can expand if they want to. Another slight variation, we've got the carousel across the top. This is our design for called One Place. And essentially, we've got our, our carousel across the top. We've got countdown across the top right-hand corner. Again, we're building hype awareness of something which is coming up. We've got those kind of... Um, world uh, clocks as well as the weather but we can also see we've broken down the news here into two separate columns so we have for example from your department and we see news articles which relates to uh, my department specifically so if i was in say the it department i would only see it related news i've also got from your country so say for example i'm based in london i would only see uh, news articles which are from the, the uk or the london office my news is just a combination of different news articles that might be relevant to me, and then news um, for for you, or this could be news for everybody. It's essentially different ways we can categorize news and show them based on certain preferences and variables. Further down, we've got some recommended viewing. So this could be a quick links web part, which has got links to some training videos for us to view, my frequent sites, sites I've re recently accessed. My recommendations is essentially content which um, it's suggesting to me based on areas of SharePoint I've recently been accessing or my colleagues have recently been accessing. And then down here, we've got these image web parts, which again, we're just using these as a way of navigate, nav using it as a navigational um, sort of tool. So we've got six uh, images here. We could have more, but I think actually the maximum I would probably use is six because otherwise it starts looking a little bit kind of cluttered. And again, you want to make sure that it's even. So if you've only got, um, say, four links, have a two by two grid um, and just don't make this three columns. But essentially, it would look a bit weird if, say, for example, we had seven and then we had another image that was underneath it. It would look a bit weird on the design. Next up, we probably have our most simplistic design of an intranet um, and scaling this back. So as I say, Busy intranets don't necessarily mean they are the most effective. Some people like to have a very simplistic option. And this is just a clean option. We've got our navigation across the top up here, our hero tiles we've looked at before. We've got our quick links, so navigating to core areas. And actually, this is often used almost like a knowledge base. So maybe we're jumping into key areas of our knowledge base or some recent popular documents. So we can keep it very simplistic if we wanted to. This is a very uh, simple and clean design. Back to a slightly more um, sort of complex structure. We have the kind of picture across the top, our banner that we're looking at on the first holler intranet, but we also have this carousel that's sliding around to ga gauge people's kind of attention and attract them to actually click on news articles. We have the useful links. Now, I really love pairing the slideshow of the news with the useful links on the right hand side, especially if you can get it to align. Um, to the bottom, I think that fits really well. It balances, as I was saying before, that kind of need for visuals and something that's engaging like a carousel versus something like um, a, a quick links bar, which makes it nice and easy to navigate to key areas of the internet. As I scroll down, we've got this kind of power of three again. This time we're using call to action web parts to help navigate to key areas of an internet, such as policies, marketing materials, branded templates and forms, things like that. Um, we can also see we can use these uh, people web parts to show maybe the senior management team or useful contacts for people to reach out to. We can embed a mission statement or even a quote in here if we wanted to. 
again we've got these kind of news which is rolling up all the news from different areas we've got those kind of uh, quick charts again but this time we're displaying them on the right hand side rather than in the middle then we have our upcoming events a call to action here which again we can link to whatever we like but in this case we've got the button centered in the middle and then we've got some videos again we can either embed them from stream or we could embed them from youtube if you had content on there as well that then brings us to our final design which again is a mashup of all those different um things we were looking at before we've got our hero tiles right across the top up here and in this case we're looking at this much more through the the eyes of a knowledge base so maybe we want to jump into management information toolbox kits of information strategy information um, maybe we have an idea that we'd like to see more content about and we could submit through a microsoft form by clicking on this link We've got our useful links here so we can jump into key areas of the knowledge base. Maybe some news about what's coming up and, and articles which are going to be submitted. Useful contacts to reach out to about specific knowledge articles. As well as that, we've got recent activity so we can see what articles have recently been updated or published to this knowledge base site as well.